Hi, my name is Dr. Ebony Rio. I'm a sports physiotherapist and also a postdoctoral research fellow at the La Trobe Sport and Exercise Medicine Research Centre in uh, Bundura, which is Victoria, Australia. Uh, I hope everyone is doing well. I know that a lot of people are facing incredibly difficult times at the moment with health and the economy. And I wanted to put up some ideas of how you might support some of your patients at home that might um, have different uh, conditions and can't get to the gym. So if we take an example of Achilles tendinopathy, we know that it can affect a really big spectrum of people from our really active, um, you know, younger people right up to our more sedentary people that might have comorbidities. So remaining active is incredibly important. So if we're thinking our stages of our tendon rehabilitation, I wanted to give you some little tips and tricks at each of those stages that you might be able to offer to your patients. So we know that in our first and second stage, it's really low tendon load. So if we're applying a static load, so an isometric load or an isotonic load, so that's concentric, eccentric. If it's slow or static, it's really safe for the tendon. And these are often um, exercises that people can do at home, particularly if they are your more um, sedentary or, or less active individual and don't require additional weight. So if we're thinking something like an isometric, you can determine um, even via video link whether someone's capable of doing a double leg or a single leg um, hold, make sure they're really well supported and really balanced so you can you know, back them into the corner of a room so they're really, um, they're really stable and getting them to rise up nice and high if they're in session because remember we want to keep them out of compression. If they're mid-substance, they can go um, just a little way off the ground because right up in full plantar flexion, there's that posterior retinaculum and they can get some compression. So what you're looking for is a load or um, as in their body weight load that they can do really well for 45 seconds. So if they're really struggling and they're getting a lot of muscle perturbation, you'd need to go um, to less load. So if you've tried them on single leg, they'd need to go to double. If you tried them on double leg and they're not capable, you could certainly limit the time um, or because it's, it's difficult to actually do below body weight loads at home. It's really tricky to balance weights and stuff on your knee. When we're thinking of our um, stage two, that's our strength phase. And it's a fantastic place for uh, people to start. It's incredibly important. You need to be uber strong before we can teach your tendon to accept those faster loads again. So remember, it's a really safe load. Ideally, people will be doing single leg because everything we do as humans, we do on one leg at a time. Um, so you'd only start some on double leg if they absolutely needed to because of capacity or, or long-term unloading. And again, you can assess people really well using um, these types of, you know, virtual telehealth um, conferencing um, platforms. So you'd be looking at their ability to do it perfectly, and that's really critical. So you can get them to draw on their foot. They want to line up the middle of their ankle joint and the middle of their second toe and, and stack those lines perfectly on top of each other while they're going up and down. So it's something that you can assess they're looking to improve their strength endurance. So what I mean by that is the number they can do just body weight only, um, single leg all the way to the top. If they're missing the top height, what you can do is get them to do uh, toe taps or weight transfers. It's where you hold on for balance, but you rise up on both feet as high as you can and you transfer to one side. Make sure you're nice and tall, go back onto two feet, recheck your height and you repeat that on each side. And you're really aiming for the top height of the calf raise. Uh, so we're looking to build up our strength endurance loads in, in this stage. There's a couple of other things you can get people to do at home if they've got access to a staircase um, and you deem it safe for them to do. They can go up and down the stairs keeping their heel off. If they do that nice and slowly to begin with, that's a great way of building endurance. So it's like end stage, stage two. Um, and on the way up, you pick up a lot of soleus with the bent knee and on the way down, you pick up a lot of gastrox. It's a, it's a brilliant um, exercise and you can just build their um, their endurance these are all with body weight loads if someone has some hand weights at home they can be doing you know walking along the ground just you know on their tippy toes um, holding hand weights but it's difficult really to get enough weight in same with the standing calf raises ideally um, if people are looking to add additional load we really are looking for you know quite decent loads like um, smith racks which obviously most people don't have at home if people do have a barbell you can um, 
get them to do it back up against the wall so that they've got those um, several points of contact and they can keep one toe on the ground. If you are using weights, you'd be still looking at that sort of four lots of six um, repetitions. So building their strength endurance with body weight and then building their pure strength by adding some additional load. Now, the same rules would apply for then transitioning into your stage three and four. So remembering that these are your higher tendon load. This is where you start to retrain some spring and start to add some speed. So you keep your strength work going, but you need to make sure that these faster activities are just done with body weight. We don't add additional weight because as soon as you add speed, you add substantial load to the tendon. So if we're thinking some stage three ideas, um, we've got lots of options, something like some faster stairs are brilliant. You can also transition someone into skipping where you can do double leg non-continuous and progress to double leg continuous, progressing to um, alternate leg, right up to single leg if, if you're needing those sort of loads. And the wonderful thing about skipping is you can change the, the time that you do it, the number of legs, so two or one or alternate, um, the height that people do. And so there's so many different variables. And the, and the great thing about that is it means you can rehabilitate um, right through the spectrum of what people are, are looking to, to do in terms of their activity. And, you know, your stage four, if you're needing to, you can be a little bit fancy with some change of direction stuff at home and, and um, getting people out to do some running if that's appropriate for where they're at. If we're thinking um, that they're already running or they're already active and we're, we're trying to support that in this stage, then you pretty much want to treat them like... Um, like an in-season athlete, and you wanna maintain their strength. So you'd be looking to do your strength endurance exercises in the evening, so they've got the whole um, night to recover in terms of their calf. Uh, you keep the strength work in as best you could with the home-based weights. And then you might consider how you, uh, how you supplement some of their running with maybe some skipping activities. So you wanna keep applying some loads on the tendon. If they're really struggling to access their strength and their gym, you might need to back off their faster activities just to almost be in a bit of a maintenance stage at the moment if that's the best thing you can do. In terms of some other kinetic chain exercises, a Bulgarian squat is fantastic. You have your back leg up on a chair, your front tibia is at 90 degrees and you, you sit back into the squat. So it's a great way of picking up some glute, um, some quads and a little bit of that sort of dynamic stability as well. Same thing with walking lunges can be brilliant. For your older um, for your older patients, you can consider things like sit to stand from a chair and, you know, it's nice and safe. You can graduate the height of the chair if you've got to be respecting other injuries like knees and hips and that sort of thing. So I hope that's given you some ideas of how you can support uh, your patients at home at the moment. And thanks so much for listening and I'm wishing everyone good health. If I can stop recording.